This paper is a theoretical contribution to the challenge faced by the HES and ED community post the decolonial challenge. It has no data of which Sue Ellen would not have approved. Who are we? We're two white women in South Africa thinking aloud about how to rethink knowledge and the implications for curriculum and pedagogy from a Southern context. It's well known that Sue Ellen's enduring concern was the relationship between knowledge structure and curriculum structure, and she worked within the Bernstinian School and later used Maton's elaborations. Towards the end of her career, she was challenged by the students' call to decolonize the curriculum. And in her last paper, used Nancy Fraser's concept of abnormal justice to rethink the problem of epistemic justice, and particularly the concept of parity of participation. And it is this concept that we are trying to think about in the paper. We aim to continue the conversation that Sue Ellen started. Um, with apologies to the two schools, the decolonial and the Bernstinian schools, we will now present two caricatures to highlight their critiques of each other. <clears throat> so the decolonial critique of the Bernsteinians would go something like this. <clears throat> Bernstein worked in the latter half of the 20th century in the UK using a class analysis to interrupt the reproduction of class relations by education systems. His model of emancipation was through agentic pedagogues who would have access to specialized knowledge. Um, the model privileges the modern disciplines, especially abstract de decontextualized knowledge of the natural sciences, vertical discourses with vertical knowledge structures as the apex of human intellectual development, and thus unwittingly maintains the epistemic power of the North over the South. The epistemological assumptions of the model are an autonomous modernizing knower abstracted from the world, unaware of his privileged locus of enunciation often, um, and a claim to produce powerful knowledge based on a subject-object duality. The consequences, according to the decolonial school, would be the silencing and absenting of other ways of knowing horizontal discourses in the Bernsteinian model, thus ignoring the legacy of race colonial structures and relations and their devastating effects on colonized peoples. The Bernsteinian rebuttal would go something like this. In their desire to emancipate the colonized from epistemic domination by the North and open up space or weaken classification for the legitimation of subaltern or indigenous knowers, the decolonial school makes dangerous epistemic assumptions. First of all, it asserts that all knowledge is situated, determined by its locus of enunciation, and and the privilege, possible privileging of local knowers. <clears throat> this leads to a pluralist or relativist epistemology in which knowledge is reduced to the knower's social position and the context of its production. Whereas powerful, legitimated knowledge, in fact, has its own objective properties and ontological weight. It can exercise causal explanatory power independently of its knowers and thus some forms of knowledge have greater explanatory power than others. Thus the decolonial school may overlook the real causal mechanisms for change contained in these powerful forms of knowledge. Over to you, Max. So we then turn to the work of uh, Roy Baskar to look at how we might uh, achieve parity of participation in knowledge production. In order to do this, we need to dismantle the causal mechanisms that per per perpetuate coloniality and block participation. This requires an adequate theorization of ontology. Epistemology, of course, uh, suggests that all knowledge is both partial and fallible and relative in different degrees to its time and place. Local knowledge is important for identifying and unlocking contingencies and contexts that prevent operation of causal mechanisms for change. This includes Western philosophy, which works within closed systems. This, the result is that it excludes alterity, negates absence, and cannot offer ontological depth to posit non-duality and universal unity. 
And in fact, we think that the, the issue with non-duality and universal unity applies to both the Bernstinian and the decolonial schools. Local knowledge is important for identifying and unlocking contingencies in contexts that prevent operation of causal mechanisms for change. The fact is that reality is stratified and epistemology is just one dimension. So, so what does this mean? The Bernstinian School shows us how to re redistribute Western symbolic power through the pedagogic device. At the same time, the, de the decolonial school alerts us to, form, to forms of misrecognition and absences caused by the structures of coloniality, which can be considered the dark side of modernity. But both set up dualistic models of society in which oppressive structures determine the fate of subjects. What would it take to move beyond the structural duality conceptually? And how might this quest, uh, how might this further our quest for parity of participation in higher education practice? In other words, how might Bascar's philosophy holding together epistemic fallibility and the depth of ontological realism move us forward? For this, we must uh, work with the broader understanding of the system and recognize the openness of the system that we are engaging with. An open system requires engagement with causality at multiple levels. Replacing white bodies with black ones is simply not sufficient to affect real transformation. We need to consider the context, the process, and the relationships at multiple levels, and thus commit ourselves to transformational praxis, because the system itself will shift as we begin to make changes. So it is this that we are exploring in this paper. <laughs>